Hello, uh, my name is Cesare Pautasso. I come from the University of Lugano in Switzerland. And this will be an interactive presentation, so feel free to uh, see so many of you with laptops here. So just go to this link and uh, to test that everything works, you can uh, answer some of those uh, questions. If It would be interesting to see how many of you uh, share these concerns. Uh, because this talk will not be about uh, APIs, uh, we had a wonderful morning session on APIs design, uh, but today I would like to talk to you what happens behind uh, the API, and I'm concerned about uh, stateful microservices, uh, microservices that need to store persistently some, uh, some information, and we uh, know that uh, from the microservices theory, the idea is that uh, every microservice is completely encapsulated and stores all the information in its own database. And uh, I was uh, talking to, to a friend of mine many years ago, and he told me, have you heard about microservices? Well, they have this uh, polyglot persistent, and uh, I think my friend was telling me there is a problem. And uh, today I would like to talk to you about this problem and uh, some of the implications of this uh, very important choice and uh, what can you do about it when it comes to uh, recovering your whole microservice architecture from disasters. So if you care about consistency, uh, then I hope you will be listening during this session. Um, so the, the link will be there also later, so there will be one, a couple more questions here, but I, I see that uh, Quite, quite a few people here in the room, they operate more than one microservice, so congratulations. Uh, and also, almost all of them, they avoid storing everything in the same data database, so they do, do seem to follow this, uh, this principle. So, um, if we go back to the microservice definition, uh, from uh, Fowler and Lewis, uh, which uh, somehow started this whole microservice movement. If you, if you read through it, not necessarily at the very beginning, when they talk about the various properties of microservices, but there is a point in which um, they say that microservices should let every service manage its own database. And uh, also, uh, the advantage of doing that is that you can choose the most appropriate persistent pers technology so that every team can pick the right tools for the job. And they call this uh, like in polyglot programming, where every microservice uses their own programming language. Uh, for the persistence part, you can pick uh, the best database. So you can pick a SQL database if you need uh, relations. You can pick a NoSQL database if you need something else. Well, what I would like to illustrate to you is that if you follow this, then chances are that uh, when something fails, uh, your architecture is doomed to become inconsistent after you recover it after a disaster strikes. This is what we call the eventual inconsistency uh, property of microservice architectures. Uh, so this is a, a very little detail, so it's not a, a, a very important topic, but it can affect you if you uh, look into, zoom in a little bit in the, in the ops part of DevOps, uh, where as part of the tasks that you do with normal operation of, of your API and your, your microservice, you have to take care of backing it up uh, just in case, and then when things go wrong, you also should be able to go through the cycle and bring it back online and recover it. Yeah? So this is what uh, we are going to focus on today. So we're not going to talk about uh, building or designing APIs and so on, but we will just focus on, on this part over here. So the uh, question is, uh, if you have a classical uh, system, a monolithic system, how do you back it up? Well, the monolith has uh, one big database, and what you can do is uh, take a dump or take a snapshot, and then you store it away in your backup. There are tools to do that. You don't even have to stop the system from running. Everything is, is fine. We know how to do that. So uh, how do you back up uh, a microservice? Well, the difference is that, of course, the microservice is a tiny little uh, thing, uh, as opposed to the big monolith. But essentially, you can do exactly the same. Yeah? So you can just take the database, and you can back it up. But, of course, a microservice architecture has more than one microservice. This is what uh, some of you guys said at the beginning. Yeah, we operate more than one microservice. So the real question here is how do you back up an entire uh, microservice architecture? Maybe it's one of those in which you have SQL and NoSQL mix, mix uh, and every microservice uh, uses the most appropriate uh, storage technology. Well, you have uh, N databases for N microservices. You just go and take the backup. Are you sure? Yeah. So um, if you do that, uh, 
let me see what uh, what can happen in in the context of a simple example where I will make one more assumption. Uh, the assumption is that these microservices are uh, somehow related to each other, and they use uh, something called uh, hypermedia, which I, I assume people know uh, what it is in, in this conference, where uh, you do not have uh, foreign key relations across databases, but databases contain links that point to other APIs, and these other APIs can give you the information that you need. So if you have an order, you have a reference to the customer, you go to the microservice for the customer, and then you can get the information uh, corresponding to that link. So if you are in this situation, then everything that I'm telling you uh, actually matters. Uh, and uh, the argument is that you cannot really decompose a microservice architecture without avoiding at some point to have this type of relationship across different microservices. So if you are in this situation, well, uh, you are operating the system and you are uh, modifying the state of the various microservices. So we, sh we show here a log of all the changes that you do to the databases. You are in this situation and you, you said, OK, now it's the time in the life cycle for the first microservice to take a backup. So here we make a, a snapshot. And then a normal operation continues. So some other order comes in. There is a new customer that is added for that order. So here you have the link from one uh, state to, to the other API. And at this point, the order wakes up and it says, okay, now is my time to take a backup. So here you have another snapshot that later you can use to recover. So at this point, uh, we have a situation in which we have taken independently the two backups at different times because we want to make sure that each microservice is independent. So uh, at this point, uh, disaster strikes. Okay, so uh, what happens? Well, we lose one microservice, uh, the customer, and uh, this is gone. The, the, the data is completely destroyed. There was an accident, but we are lucky. Yeah, we have a backup. Always take a backup. Yeah? So one microservice is lost. Uh, well, we can recover it. What happens? You can see where this is going. Yeah? At this point, before the recovery, all of these links are broken. All of the references from the orders to the customers uh, cannot be satisfied. If you, if you don't uh, reload the, the database into the customer service, and the customer service will give you a 404. And when you go and reload it from the database, uh, these links are fine, but uh, the system is uh, no longer able to uh, find things that before the, the crash, before the disaster, was able to, to answer. Yeah? So this is what we call eventual inconsistency. Yeah? Because after the disaster has hit your system, you recover, you think you're fine, but you have this problem. So how can we avoid uh, this situation? Well, one way would be to say, let's take a backup together of uh, all microservices. In this case, we are sure that the snapshot will be consistent, and these links uh, will not break when we recover. However, I will put a, it's very easy to write it on the slide, uh, to say we want to take a backup of all the microservices at the same time. But if you understand that, uh, you know, we call it microservices, but in reality it's a distributed system, and you know a little bit of distributed system theory, you know that the word at the same time in a distributed system doesn't make any sense. It is not possible to go and say, yeah, now uh, we agree among all the microservices, we go and take the snapshot at this point. Yeah. So even if it were possible to do it, you would still put a very big assumption on the independence life cycle of these services, because at some point you have to say at midnight, everywhere in the system, now it's midnight and now we take the backup. So in this case, I would argue that if you want to avoid this eventual inconsistency, you have to weaken a little bit the assumption that you make that the various microservices are independent. So you limit the autonomy of the various uh, components in your system. So this brings me to this uh, theorem. I, wouldn't, I didn't put it in the title of the presentation because if I put the word theorem in this conference, maybe the room is empty, but I'm glad to, to see that uh, you guys showed up. And uh, what it says uh, is that basically when you have a microservice architecture and you take a backup and recover strategy to make it uh, full tolerant, it's not possible to have both consistency and autonomy. This is one of those, uh, you can only have it two out of three situations that, that we are uh, postulating here. So basically, within th this life cycle, we are saying that you uh, can either have independent backups or you can have consistent recovery, but you cannot have both. Yeah? And let me try to uh, prove it to you. So uh, what do I mean by consistency? Well, the idea is that uh, 
as the definition says, if nothing goes wrong, every mi microservice will eventually reach a consistent state. We're talking about eventual consistency. And what does it mean? Well, when you have these references that point to another API, you can assume that eventually it will not be a 404. Eventually, you can follow the link and get what you're looking for. So uh, there is this idea of having some kind of a referential integrity across different microservices. What do I mean by autonomy? Well, by definition, every microservice has an independent DevOps lifecycle. You should be able to push changes to, to turn it on, on and off whenever you want. This should not affect the rest of the system. We had a very beautiful talk before the break uh, saying that uh, you know if this is not true, then you have a distributed monolith. It's not a microservice architecture. And uh, what do I mean in, in, the, in this particular context? Well, we want to be able to take snapshots on backups of all the microservices at different times without requiring any kind of agreement, any kind of coordination between the different uh, microservices. So um, if somebody asks you, I, my goal today is to be able to uh, make you all see that uh, when you back up the system, somebody asks you, can we take a consistent snapshot of all microservices without affecting their autonomy? And the answer is no. Yeah? So this is uh, something that is not possible because if you uh, want to keep them independent, if you want to guarantee the autonomy, then this will, as I showed you before in the example, uh, cause uh, snapshots uh, of each microservice taken at different times. Therefore, when you recover them, they will not be consistent. And if you try to ensure consistency, because this is important for you, this is important for your application, you, you do not want to have these broken links, then you have to first uh, reduce the autonomy between the different life cycles, so they have all to have to agree when to do it. Then you also have to disallow updates anywhere during the backup. So during this window, when you're taking a snapshot, you should not go and modify the state. So you have read-only access to the APIs during this backup window. And then you should also wait until the, the last microservice is done. So you have a little bit of a performance hit. If you have a very big, big microservice somewhere with a lot of data, you have to wait until this is backed up before you reopen read and write access. Uh, so how do we solve that? Well, uh, this is a, I was talking to some people about this problem, and they said, well, it's not really a big deal. We just put everything in the centralized database. It's going to be shared by all the microservices, and then the question to you, and I have 29 people right now that could answer it, is still this a microservice architecture? So let me uh, suspend a little bit and see what you guys think. Of course, my opinion, this is uh, probably not the case, but wisdom of the crowd. Okay, interesting. So we have uh, six people that are actually in favor of this approach. And then if you do this, then uh, problem solved. You, you can go home now and life is easy. But if you, if you actually say that you know, uh, this will uh, couple all the, the data, you know, it's like saying we want to keep the central DBA for the whole organization and all the teams will have to talk to this guy to store that information. Yeah? So thanks for, uh, for answering. There is a, a slight skew towards uh, my, my opinion that this is not really microservices, but there is a compromise. Yeah? So what we can do is also uh, having a, a physically centralized database with logical separation of the schemas. So in this case, uh, the data is not really mixed, the schemas are separate, but physically they are stored in the same server, in the same system, so that you can go underneath and take the snapshot at the same time. Now, however, this is possible, it's a compromise, but if you do this, what happened to this uh, beautiful polyglot persistent where you can go and say, everybody use whatever data management solution you want. In this case, you'll say, well, use whatever schema and model that you want for your data, but in the end, it's the same system where you're gonna have to store the data. So it's a little bit of a compromise. Uh, if you, uh, how do you say, if you reflect about the implications of this, it's interesting to basically realize that the moment that you decide to split the monolith and introduce microservices, you should be able to live with the consequences that references across microservices can break. And uh, this, at the end of the day, it's a fundamental property of the web. And if you uh, drink the rest Kool-Aid and, and you have hypermedia and so on, you know that you have a link, but there is no guarantee that you follow the link and you find something. You can always get a 404. And this uh, will be true also for your own uh, microservice architecture. 
But uh, broken link are not the only consequence of this. If we invert uh, the, the, the failed microservice in the same example as before, and we lose uh, the microservice referencing the other one, so in this case we lose the order, then what is going to happen when we recover it, we are going to have what we call orphan state on the other side. So in this case we have a customer for which the order has disappeared. So there's nothing wrong with keeping an extra customer in your list, but in this case this customer is not referenced from anywhere else. So it could be not a problem or it could be depending on the application or it could be a little leak that you have data that nobody is pointing at that you might need to do some garbage collection. Yeah? So this is uh, also something that you do not usually notice because if you have a link and you follow it and it breaks, you notice. But if, if this is not referenced anywhere, it's just sitting and filling up your database, but there is no, no real problem. Uh, another expensive approach to, to deal with this problem is uh, to introduce uh, synchronous replication in your, in your data layer. So in this case, we're going to make copies, uh, live copies, live synchronization of all the databases that we have in every microservice. This is also possible. It's a little bit expensive because you have to pay n times for the storage as opposed to only one. You have to have n copies and you have to wait when you write until you get uh, uh, the acknowledgement from the replica. If you do this asynchronously, then there is no guarantee because it could fail before the, the data is copied. So it has to be synchronous if you want to avoid the problem that I'm talking about. So your system becomes this beautiful multi-data center replicated thing that uh, basically never stops running. And the last time that I saw this type of uh, approach uh, was called an uh, unsinkable ship. So in this case, it's the unstoppable system that, you know, as long as you have enough copies floating around, you will not, never lose the data. But at the end of the day, what you should ask yourself is, how do you restart an unstoppable system? Yeah. So, uh, what am I talking about? Well, uh, part, part of the, the reason why this is happening comes from this approach that uh, uh, waits for uh, the system to be, to be consistent. And uh, you are, are basically taking the backups at the wrong time. Yeah? Because we know that eventually your microservices will be consistent, but we are not waiting until then to take the backup. And there is a little bit of a difference between this yellow situation and the red situation in which you get after you recover from, from, a, from a disaster. Yeah? Because the good thing about eventually consistency, it's eventual, therefore, if you keep retrying long enough, it will work. That's the beauty of it, right? We don't have to put any strong coupling between the microservices because we know that eventually the changes will be propagated and we will have the information where we are looking for it. So if you get a 404, it's okay, just retry and then it will, it will work. However, with eventual inconsistency, retries are completely useless because it will never be consistent again. You lost the data, you recovered, and the data is not there, and it will not be there because there is nothing in flight that will actually go and write it. This, the transaction that changed the information is long gone, and you just uh, uh, have to live with the consequences, but the retry is not going to help. So this is a permanent failure. And before the disaster happened, everything was fine. Yeah, so it's a little bit like saying, okay, now I know that temporarily I am yellow, but it will be green, but then in this case it will be uh, red and it will not work. So it would be great if we could postpone the backup at a later point in time in which we can say, well, let's take a snapshot when everything is consistent. So then the question is, how can we do that? Well, uh, with not so popular with APIs uh, nowadays, but it is possible to operate across multiple uh, microservices with something called distributed transactions. So in this case, we can make sure that when we change the state of one microservice, we can do this atomically across multiple microservices so that everything happens or nothing. And uh, if you do so, then you make a change, both microservices commit, the distributed transaction is done, and at this point you know that you can do the backup. Yeah? You can be more or less strict. You can also, you could also think of including the, the backup database into the transaction, or you could do it uh, asynchronous, but the point is that there is a point in time in which you know that you can copy all the, all the, all the states of all the microservices, and you will have a consistent snapshot. Uh, so this is uh, theoretically possible. So in other words, you should avoid eventual consistency when you change the, the state of a microservice 
propagate uh, the, the impact everywhere. And, um, well, if you go back to the original uh, Fowler and Lewis definition, they also mention distributed transactions and they say, don't do it. <laughs> they say, if you want to do loosely coupled microservices, you should not expect that they follow some kind of a, a consensus. And, you know, you, you should actually take advantage of eventual consistence for which there are many good uh, implications. Yeah? However, if you, if you go this route and you just uh, do eventual inconsistency, then you have to fall, deal, live with the consequences of what I'm talking about. So, uh, as an advice for, for you guys that have to uh, split the monolith every day, uh, well, uh, my advice would be to consider every microservice as a little island of consistency, that you know that uh, you can back it up and recover it within uh, its boundary, everything is fine, and try to minimize the number of links that you have across. Uh, so, if there are links that cannot ever break, yeah, that for which you, you cannot afford to look up the ad, through the other API the information they're looking for and you don't find it, then keep them together. Yeah, you can have this compromise solution where you put it in the same storage, which can be backed up at the same time. If you don't care if a uh, product disappears and uh, the order becomes uh, inconsistent with it, then you can keep it separate and you can use this as a, one of the various criteria that are there for splitting uh, the monolith. So if microservices can tolerate eventual inconsistencies, fine, otherwise consider putting the storage layer together. So does it apply to you? This is a, a checklist that you, you can consider. So we, uh, you have to have more than one stateful microservice. Uh, these are polyglots, so uh, they also rely on eventual consistency. They might have this uh, cross microservice reference and you have a backup and restore approach to disaster recovery. So if you take independent backups, if you keep your microservices autonomous, as a consequence, after disaster recovery, you will be inconsistent. And if you go and synchronize the backups, so you, you limit a little bit the autonomy, so every time, every day or every once in a while that you take a backup, you do it synchronously, then you can achieve this uh, consistent recovery, at least uh, theoretically. So to, to summarize uh, what this is about, this is one of those uh, two out of three uh, things are possible, but it's not possible to get all of them, so this is black. Yeah? So you can choose between having a system that is giving you uh, backups with a consistent recovery, and therefore it will be not uh, autonomous. So one could argue, is it really microservices, because you have this coupling in the life cycle. Or you can make it uh, microservice uh, autonomous, but then you will not have the consistency. Or you can simply choose not to back it up. And then, you know, you will have consistency and autonomy. Yeah? Now, uh, why am I saying not to back it up? Uh, very, very quickly, just to show you this case. Uh, we have a recovery from a backup that is a bit older, so we, we lose the information here. Yeah, this is now broken. What can you do to keep, make it consistent? You can trim the database. Yeah? So you can say, well, I also forget this part and now the system is consistent with backed up, with, while being backed up at different times. Well, if you do so, you are not just uh, losing data on the left, but you also lose it on the right. Do you want to do that? Uh, I don't know, but uh, you know, this way you can uh, basically understand that if you don't back up uh, your, your system, then you can achieve uh, consistency and autonomy. So to summarize, uh, when backing up a whole microservice architecture, it's not possible to have both consistency and availability. And as a consequence, microservice architecture eventually becoming consistent after disaster strikes if you take independent backups. And uh, if you want to try to recover in a consistent state, you have to uh, be careful with your backup strategy and maybe you have to put all the data in one place. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm out of time. So these are just things that uh, we are thinking about now, about, uh, you know, this is the end of the day is a trade-off. Do you want to prevent inconsistency? How expensive is inconsistency to you? And uh, this also is advice to keep things together if you want to avoid breaking these links. If you want to know more information, click uh, on this link if you are connected and you can get a free copy of this paper where we have uh, written out all the details. So, thank you very much for your attention. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you.